very quickly tags. <laughs> tags on units need to be legit and these are all legit tags. Trying to get damn light. There we go. The four Model 2s are all intrinsically safe. And intrinsically safe radios are very desirable. The ones that are Model 3s When they're not Model 3s, they don't have, or I mean when they're not intrinsically safe, the, they will either come with a white bottom tag or they'll come with no bottom tag. But these are all legit radios. The flash codes are different. When you see on eBay radios with tags, always get a hold of the seller and ask him to put that radio in service mode. And uh, some might not be able to do it. This one is an older one, that's why it doesn't have the do not block vents. But I do have that sticker and uh, you know I could add it or not. Uh, I don't think I will. They're legit. I mean, it, it's just an older, an older model radio, older production. But the rest have them, and that's fine. And uh, but yeah, tags. Get a hold of the sellers when you're uh, looking at radios. Uh, ask about tags. Ask if they have back tags. Uh, run the serial numbers and uh, also you can go to Acre Dam uh, they've got a flash uh, flash code generator and it, you run the flash codes now the flash codes on these are actually uh, matching they're the matching flash codes on these but, uh, the ones up here, have been upgraded, and when firmware is upgraded, the flash codes will uh, not match the tags. That's no big deal. Uh, that's no problem. In fact, that's kind of a good thing. Uh, I mean, if you can't get a radio... Danger in police department. See, that's why I don't like channel announcement. Uh, if you can't get a radio that has... Uh, that has a... a get these. I've got lithium ions on some, and those are the ones that actually uh, see you, so... Uh, lithium ions are where it's at. But anyway, uh, you can go to Acre Dam, and uh, hell, I'll even, uh, you know, it'll cut down on my messaging. Uh, I'll even put a link in the description. And you can go to that site, and you need to run your flash codes. But flash codes on a back tag really don't mean jack, because, you know, if a radio's been upgraded, and if the firmware's been upgraded, which is a good thing, then uh, you know you're going to have uh, a different flash code that reads on the radio. You're going to have a different flash code that reads on the radio, not on this. But you need to you need to read the flash code 
off of the radio itself. Shit. Sorry about the lighting. That's the flash code. It's hard to catch, but you need to know it. <laughs> you know, it, buying a radio that's been upgraded, usually if they say it's been upgraded, it's already, you know, it's already got a very good flash code to it. If it's got FPP Q52 and Q53, then, you know, that's pretty damn nice. Uh, but, at the same time, tags are important. And, uh, you know, you need to have legitimate radios and you need to have solid radios. And tags are a way to ensure that. Uh, there are some, uh, some out of China that will actually, uh, on the, on, there's been a couple radios that have been floating around. Instead of flash code or f flash port, look, at, look uh, very carefully because that L can be a U. Let's say flush port. They're knockoff tags. So, you know, I mean, there are sometimes uh, you really, and look at the font. I'm not kidding. You know, look at the font. Make sure that you're getting legitimate tags too, because tags can be reproduced. It's not common, but, uh, you know, it can happen. And over in China, they, they can write, instead of flash port, they write flush port. So, uh, you know, watch that. Uh, you know, if you, if you see something like that, then chances are, you know, you're, you're going to be disappointed when you get the radio. Maybe not, but, you know, get, get legitimate tags. You know, get legitimate tags, legitimate serial numbers. The serial numbers are all embedded in the radio. When you do fire the radio up, Damn it, there's something. Ah, there we go. Okay. Thought there was something on the screen, but it's or on the lens, but it's actually on my screen. Uh, it will tell you the serial number on the radio's code plug. There. Model number, serial number. It'll tell you all the information you need. You need to know how to get these radios into service mode. The minute you power it up, or the second you power it up, as soon as it powers up, hit this button right here five times and it'll put it into service mode. It doesn't do anything to the radio, it doesn't harm the radio, it doesn't reprogram the radio, it doesn't do anything like that. It just reads you the information that you need to know in order to have solid information as to the tags and as to the verification of whether that radio has been upgraded. If it's been upgraded, that's a good thing. Uh, if it's been upgraded from a Model 2 to a Model 3, you're getting a brand new keypad, you're getting, in many cases, if it's been upgraded to a Model 1, you're getting a radio with a brand new LCD, a brand new keypad, and brand new keypad rubber. Uh, that is a lot better than having an old beat-up radio that, you know, is a Model 3, but uh, has been used a lot. Uh, it's just as simple as that. LCDs can go bad. Anything can go bad. And, you know, when radios have been upgraded, that is a good thing. Unless you've got some, you know, hack, uh, you know, in China uh, or Hong Kong or wherever, uh, you know, piecing radios together and, uh, and putting fake tags on and, and dicking around and, you know, or not putting any tags on at all and selling the radios for, you know, a couple hundred bucks less. And a lot of people get them when they get them. They'll hold on to them for about a year and then you'll see them back up on eBay again. It's not always the case, but you know, tags are important. And the worth of a radio with tags will always be more than with legitimate tags and the flash code that you can actually run you know, if somebody won't give you that information, then I would think twice about buying that radio. That's just me. But, you know, I'm picky, and uh, I don't really want to get a hold of a radio that, uh, that I don't exactly know what is coming with it. 
So, you know, you can pay less and you can get a radio without tags, but you, they've also, many of them haven't been through Motorola quality control. You know, so I mean, you know, the ones that are in Hong Kong, the ones that are in China, some have been in accelerated live testing. Some of them, you know, have, well, you know, there's a reason they pull tags, and I'm not going to get into that, but uh, it's, uh, there's a reason that the radios don't have tags. Get a radio with tags, get a radio, try to, try to get with dealers, and tell the dealers, ask them, say, could you please uh, put the radio in service mode? I told you, power it up, hit it four times, hit that button. It's the bottom button, right? It's the one right above push to talk. So I hit it five times, read it back to me, send me an email with that flash code. Uh, if it's already got FPP and, uh, you know, if it is a verified FPP radio, chances are it's a good deal. Uh, you know, if it's got tags on it. Uh, if it's got FPP, it's probably pretty good. But uh, always, always check on tags because, you know, I don't care who you are or what you say, uh, you know, radios without tags are never a good idea. And uh, you need to have them legit. When you find out that the flash codes don't match the, the code plugs, that's not a bad thing. That just means that the radio has been upgraded. And like I said, when it's been upgraded, it's got good keypad rubber. It's got, in many cases, it'll have a new LCD if it's been upgraded to, from a Model 1 to a Model 3. Firmware has been upgraded, new flash. You know, you're getting a very, very good radio. So, you know, I mean, uh, but the ones that are coming out of Hong Kong and China and, uh, you know, Istanbul, you know, I mean, if they don't have tags, that's a problem. Uh, you know, I've just seen it through the years and you need to have legit tags. And watch the tags, watch the font, know your tags. You know, you've got to because if you don't, uh, you know, you don't want to wind up with a radio that says flush board on it. You know, I mean, you know, get a legit radio. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, these are all intrinsically safe, which is very cool. And it's a very good thing to have. Uh, they'll be good sellers. But, yeah, I'm going to keep a hold of probably, I don't know. I may, I may keep six, I don't know, for a while. Uh, but one will, I'll probably let one go. And keep a six pack, but uh, for a while, and then I'll pull my head out of my ass and uh, realize that I really don't need more than four, and uh, probably sell the others. But uh, yeah, make sure you have tags. That's all I'm saying. And you know, maybe you know, if you if you've got a radio with that tags and it works fine, then you know, more power to you. That's good. Uh, chances are you lucked out, uh, but at the same time, get a radio with tags, legit tags. Be able to run the serial numbers, you know, you can go to trace.com, run the serial numbers, run the tags through, run the flash codes, and do your homework, because if you don't do your homework, you're going to end up sorry, and it's just as simple as that. Anyway, guys, later on, take it easy. Uh, these radios are going to be really, really nice. I'm real excited about it. To have seven of them, uh, six of them with FPP and then I'm going to keep that one a Model 2 because I just like the way the Model 2's look. Uh, you know, in the future I may upgrade it, but I do like Model 2's a lot. You know, there's, there's a lot to be said for a Model 2 and uh, just a variation. So, uh, a six pack of FPP's in 2500's and in 5000's, it's a good, good little uh, good system for anybody if you've got a six pack of either one of them uh, that's good that'll that'll you know if you've got a small department you know you've got people you know people uh, who are in the agencies around here you know I mean they swap they just they'll put their radios down at the end of the shift they'll uh, leave it for the next next officer he'll come by he'll slap another battery on and he'll go so, you know, I mean, budgets and things are tight with agencies, and uh, 
you know a lot of them don't have grant writers you know if if you're uh, in an agency the best job security you can have would be to be writing grants to uh, because grants equals money and if you've got a grant writer and if you or, and if you know how to write grants and apply for grants uh, do that because your job security will be there uh, and you'll be a lot more valuable to your department and uh, you know a lot of people don't think about that but seriously grants are very important because in the economy funds are limited but if you have a grant writer who knows what he's doing and he knows how to write and apply for grants then if you're in an agency and you know how to do that if you don't know how to do that you should learn to do that because that's job security right there anyway guys take it easy later on